What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. Thank you guys for being here both at the Dolce Diet YouTube channel, but also on our brand new channel called the 20 Minute Fitness Network. Make sure you subscribe to that for daily in-home workouts, all completely for free. Now, today we're going to be talking about the best carb sources to gain muscle, but also lose fat. And in this common era, specifically during World Carnivore Month, when nobody is allegedly eating carbohydrates, everyone's allegedly only eating meat. But that's not true. It's not true, by the way. There's a lot of hocus pocus, focus, conflation, and straw man arguments being thrown into the fitness marketing clickbait community. Don't believe the hype. Let Uncle Mike tell you what the truth is. Now, let, let, let's back up for a second. When we talk about the best carbohydrates, we have to consider the context of why are we eating this specific carbohydrate? When we work with our elite athletes competing at world-class levels of weight-class-oriented sports like the UFC or the Olympic Games or the NCAA Division I National Championships, these individual athletes have to weigh a very certain, very precise number at a very certain, very precise time while also having to perform at world-class levels. Now, we understand, stick with me for a moment, in order to do that, these athletes must be A, adequately fueled, B, healthy biological organisms that we all are as humans many people forget that humans are biological organisms we are cellular organisms and that's important why is that important because micronutrients and phytochemicals are catalysts for all cellular activity and if we decide to arbitrarily remove entire categories of nutrient groups, what happens? We become micro and micronutrient phytochemical deficient, thereby removing these catalysts for optimal cellular activity, thereby inhibiting the optimal athletic performance when we're talking about our athletes, but also general health for the average human being. Simply stated, our cells do not operate optimally because now they are nutrient deficient. And we all know and understand that many of these vital micronutrients and phytochemicals come from carbohydrate sources. So back to strategic carbohydrate ingestion. Why are we eating these specific carbohydrates? What is the goal? Are we eating specific carbohydrates to attain a very specific micronutrient and phytochemical fulfillment? Yes, possible, which is why we speak about a broad variety of nutrients, um, principally um, uh, procured or, or, or added into our meal plan. We have a very robust meal plan when we think about our Living Lean program, even our Three Weeks to Shredded program. But now let's talk about optimal. When we speak about what, what's the best carbohydrate source, I'm going to take this back and simply talk in terms of energy metabolism and substrate utilization. We understand that humans, you and I, we are glycolytic beings in that glucose, glucose, again, I will say glucose is the primary fuel source for the brain, for the heart, for the working muscles. So glucose is kind of important. The optimal Let me let me step back. Some people will say, hey, Dolce, you don't need to eat carbohydrates. And these are the keto heads. And even now the carnivores, you don't need to eat carbohydrates because the body will actually create its own glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis, basically by, by taking protein, taking the amino acids and converting them into glucose. This is a survival mechanism. It is not a very efficient mechanism. And compared to a healthy carbohydrate ingestion, it is much inferior 
just, just relying on gluconeogenesis for, for, you know, small little bits of glucose that are actually robbing the body of those vital amino acids. We understand that carbohydrates are protein sparing in that when we're ingesting proper carbohydrates in the right ratios at the right times from the right sources, these have a protein sparing effect, allowing those amino acids, protein, right, is, is, is you know, built of, of, of amino acids, allowing those amino acids to do their specific job. Now, gluconeogenesis is a very inefficient process. It is a survival default mechanism. Okay. So now when we speak about, well, what protein, what carbohydrate sources are best? Many people avoid, think about this. You've all heard that, well, white rice is bad for you. White potatoes are bad for you. We should eat sweet potatoes instead of white potatoes. We should eat brown rice instead of white rice. Well, this is flawed. This is false. This is not true. When we think of specific, specific targeted carbohydrate ingestion, why am I eating this? And everything we do has to be taken in context. Am I eating a carbohydrate source to provide my body with vital micronutrients and phytochemicals? Possibly. Am I eating a specific carbohydrate source to retain as stored glycogen, later expressed as glucose? Possibly. Am I eating a specific carbohydrate source for immediate access to glucose immediately dumped into the bloodstream for immediate activity? Possibly. What's the purpose of the carbohydrate ingestion? In general, I will lean towards white rice. And my buddy Stan Efferding, the creator of the Vertical Diet, the world's strongest bodybuilder, he and I have had many robust conversations from two different vantage points on this exact topic. Stan is a, a bodybuilder concerned more with strength sports and aesthetics. I am not a bodybuilder. I work with athletes, extreme athletes. More perform, more, we are more concerned with longevity, long-term health, and short-term sports performance, at, uh, at performance, athletic performance, right? So we have two different perspectives on this issue, and we both agree that white rice is actually ideal when we're talking about the easiest carbohydrate source to rapidly and most efficiently digest. Well, that actually is white rice. It is white rice. It's, it's not brown rice and it's not quinoa. It's not waxy maize. It's not some sort of synthetic toxic chemical carbohydrate gobbledygook. It's not Gatorade. It's none of that garbage. It's not pixie sticks and sour patch kids. It's not that. It's simply white rice. Now, when we talk about the best carbohydrate source, well, white rice really ranks very highly up there. We push towards produce. Now, our athletes, even when leaning out, even when getting ready for weight class oriented sports, our athletes eat four servings of fruit per day, every single day, even while weight cutting. We do not cut carbohydrates while weight cutting. That's a whole nother video. We do not drop fiber while weight cutting. That's, that's a whole nother video. I'll speak on that. Hopefully I can have some good debates on that, by the way. But the best carbohydrate source, well, white rice. Now I will point you to think about competitive bodybuilders. These are the most muscular humans on the planet with the lowest amount of body fat, whether it is non-drug tested or drug tested. The number one carbohydrate source that bodybuilders eat is what? White rice. So if white rice will make you fat, why do bodybuilders eat one and a half to four cups per day while leaning out? And maintaining muscle. Well, number one, because carbohydrates are protein sparing, allowing those amino acids to actively help repair and replicate muscle tissue from the stimuli um, exerted through the trading. Carbohydrates are protein sparing. Number two, carbohydrates stored as glucose, stored as glycogen, expressed as glucose, are the primary energy source to fuel you 
for those hard training sessions, whether you're in the gym squatting, you're 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 in the gym fighting and sparring, whether you're you're in the gym swinging kettlebells, you're David Goggins or Cam Haynes running mountains, fighting aliens like Tim Kennedy, who knows what you're doing. Carbohydrates are the primary fuel source. And in those cases, we want to be site-specific with our carbohydrate ingestion. Very, very important here. Why am I eating this carb? What is the purpose of this carb? I'm eating this white rice right now to be stored as glycogen, site-specific in the muscle, to be utilized and activated as glucose, bang, when I need it right away. That's the purpose. If I do not have carbs, if I'm on keto, if I am carnivore, guess what? I do not have that stored glycogen. I now have to rely on a very inefficient process of my body to actually convert amino acids into glucose or to rely on exogenous ketones that are just haphazardly floating through the bloodstream, hoping eventually they get to the hardworking muscles. And Dr. Andy Galpin did a great job years ago explaining this on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast not confronting, but challenging what Dr. Dom D'Agostino had said incorrectly previously on the Joe Rogan podcast. And boom, it blew Joe's mind in a good way. Andy Gappin did a great job explaining exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you right now. So now to pull all this back again, what is the, what is the best carbohydrate source? Well, there is no, no best. It's what's best in the moment for this individual, for the specific goal. Now, remember, carbohydrates, carbohydrate sources from produce, from fruit, from vegetables. Don't believe what everyone says or what all these keto heads and carnivore heads, unfortunately, don't believe how they conflate the science to build a straw man argument around their marketing scheme. Fresh fruit is not bad for you. It never will be. Quinoa is not bad for you. It never will be. White rice is not bad for you. It never will be. When eaten at the right times in the right proportion for the right reason. Now, you cannot tell me, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, maybe slightly off track here. You cannot tell me that half a cup of quinoa and butternut squash is bad for me, but I can go to McDonald's and order a double quarter pounder with cheese, no bun, no lettuce, no tomato, like the keto heads in the carnivore say, right? They can go out and eat a bag of pork rinds, and that's, hey, keto, brah. That's carnivore, brah. They can eat that, but they cannot eat blueberries or hemp seeds. Because somehow those are bad. Hopefully you can see how ridiculous their statement is. Now, I don't care. I eat meat. I eat meat. Check the certified Piedmontese link below. I eat meat. I am a fisherman. I fish almost every single day. Some days I catch, some days I don't. My freezer is filled with meat and with fish. I eat eggs every day. I eat meat every day. I eat fish every day. I produce a cold processed, grass fed, micro filtered whey protein isolate that comes from animals. So don't think for a second, I don't eat meat. I do eat meat, but also I will not pretend that carbohydrates are unhealthy because they are not. And anyone who says so is either a dunce or a liar. That's my opinion. Explain to me how butternut squash is bad for you. Explain to me how quinoa is bad for you. Explain to me how beets are bad for you. Explain to me how conventional raised pork bacon is good for you. Explain to me how in and out burger, minus the bun, minus the lettuce, minus the tomato... A four stack with American cheese, which is not even cheese, by the way. It's a synthetic, toxic, chemically created cheese-like substance. Explain to me how that is good. That's not good. Right? So hopefully you can see, and I'm having a little bit of fun here, and I'm slightly off topic, and I'll, I'll close the loop right now. 
Hopefully you can see that carbohydrates are not bad. Carbohydrates are good. If carbohydrates made you fat, why does every single bodybuilder on stage eat carbohydrates to prepare for bodybuilding competitions? And they are the most shredded athletes on the planet. Well, maybe next to my athletes, by the way. Or pretty damn shredded. Also, eating four servings of fruit per day, eating oats almost every day, eating white rice almost every day. Follow our three weeks to shredded program. Click the link below to learn more about our three weeks to shredded program. It works. We are the only team in all of combat sports with a 100% success ratio, getting our athletes on weight on time every single time for over 20 years. And the worst, the worst weight cutters in the history of MMA have worked with us, sent to us by the UFC, sent to us by Bellator, sent to us by 1FC, right? We work with the worst weight cutters and we have a 100% success ratio while feeding them carbohydrates the entire time, feeding them fruit the entire time. Why is that? Because they are adequately fueled. Because they are no longer micronutrient and phytochemical, chemically deficient. They are healthy human beings, biological organisms, and we pay attention to that. And to pretend that carbohydrates are not essential for optimal health and athletic performance and body composition is flawed logic. So I will stop this there. Hopefully this is helpful. Please leave any comments. You can ask any comments right now in the chat. I'm going to spend a few minutes answering these, these questions in the chat. If you appreciate this, if you agree, give this video a like. Leave comments below this video. I answer questions. I make the videos about your questions. And subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm happy to just help you. My job is to provide honest, actionable, and evidence-based information to dramatically improve your life. Most people, they simply want you to buy into the bullshit that they're selling you. I am just telling you the truth and what works. That's it. That is my job. That is my job. I am the four-time world MMA trainer of the year, number one best-selling author, and I have a 25-plus year resume of working with the world's greatest athletes, all of which is very easy to research. So my resume is out there for the whole world to see for nearly three decades right now. What do we have? Uh, T4T says, boom. Hey coach, with the four by four meals, does that include your protein shakes? Yes, the four by four is an easy entryway into the Dolce diet. Four meals, about four hours apart, four times throughout the day. Basically it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some sort of shake or smoothie. We prefer whole foods. I say I sell a protein powder, but I don't want you to buy it initially until you're already following the four by four. Four whole meals of high net nutrient foods. Lean proteins, green vegetables, clean burning carbohydrates. When we say green vegetables, we mean green and color. That doesn't kind of sound as cool as lean, green, and clean. The four by four, an easy way to enter into the Dolce diet system without having to buy anything or spend anything. It's an easy way to just roll into the program. From there, you can click any of the links below. We have personalized programs and all that fun stuff if you need it. Seth says, coach, so glad to catch a live stream. Hope all is well. I am a blessed man. Life is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Seth, for saying that and for asking that. I appreciate that. Brett says, love the channel. Great in-depth information. Thank you so much. All I ask is you guys engage with this channel. We were shadow banned a year and a half ago because we were speaking about the importance of personal health, of going to your doctor, getting your blood work done, forcing yourself to accept you might not be as healthy as you think you were and using medical data to help you determine that getting your BMI to a healthy range, following healthy lifestyle protocols. And we were shadow banned on Google, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, because that went against the um, um, PC narrative, unfortunately. The way we break out of that is me coming on every day, giving you the most honest, actionable, and evidence-based information to dramatically improve your life. And you guys checking us out and engaging, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, definitely subscribing, and hopefully you appreciate what I say. I am here for you. No other agenda other than to tell you the truth from a true expert position and share as much information as I can to help you and then answer your questions. Whole grain, whole grain rice. Sure, fine. Number one thing I can do for longevity. Well, I'm going to say go to a doctor, go to your doctor and get a wellness test done. That's step one, number one. 
every human out there, every three to six months, you should go to your doctor, you should get a wellness checkup, you should get a comprehensive blood panel done, and you should put that blood panel, all your results, into a very simple spreadsheet. So you can look every three to six months over year one, year two, year three, year four, and you and your doctor can start to look at different trends. This is World Carnivore Month. It should be called World Colonoscopy Month. Right. If this is World Carnivore Month, when all the carnivores are telling you to run out to In-N-Out Burger and order four, um, um, you know, four by fours or whatever they call it, four burgers and four slices of cheese, no bun, no lettuce, that'll kill you somehow. You probably want to get a colonoscopy also if you're a 40 year old or older man. I at 45 just had a colonoscopy, also invasive procedure. Um, it's simple, easy. It was minutes. It took minutes. It was super easy. I had an upper and lower endoscopy because I was on the table. Anyway, I practice what I preach. I've had my, 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 my CAC score, my, my, my um, um, calcium score. I had that done. Bang, scored a perfect zero, and that, that is the perfect score. I, get my, I, I, I focus on preventative. Preventative health care is most important. That's the number one thing I would, I would suggest for you. And then stay here, hang out on this channel. Watch every video every single day. Listen to our live chats, all the live free stuff that we put out, listen to it and then say, huh, that Dolce makes sense. Or if I don't make sense, please research every single thing I say, please research it and try and prove me wrong. Please try and prove me wrong. If you do let me know, I mean, good luck trying to good luck proving me wrong because I'm not saying anything that's false here and everybody listening will agree. Um... James says, just tuned into this awesome man listening. I need advice for dieting to keep weight on during MMA training. It's really hard for me. Thanks, Dolce. You need consistency. Now, if you don't follow our programs, you can look at the links below. You can start our Living Lean program. It's online. It's personalized. It will build the most ideal program for you based upon your background, based upon your training history, based upon your goals. It's all built inside our sophisticated rule engine at thedolcediet.com. You can click a link below if you want something personalized. If you don't have the time or the money to do that, no problem. Follow what we call the four by four. Four meals spread four times throughout the day, about four hours apart. You want to be consuming equal amounts of protein at every single meal. Probably about 40 grams of protein times four. That's about 160 grams of protein per day. That will do you well if you are a hard trading, average, healthy adult MMA athlete. That's a good baseline to get started. Lean, green, and clean. Lean proteins, green vegetables, clean burning carbohydrates. Now, here's the hard thing. The hardest thing is the easiest thing, is be consistent. Four times a day, four hours apart, four meals every day. Not Monday through Friday and YOLO Saturday and Sunday. Not Monday and Tuesday and skip breakfast on Wednesday and back on it on Thursday and take the girl to a fancy dinner on Friday. Nope, that doesn't work. We have to remove variability. You have to get consistent. You have to get specific. It's like dollar cost averaging your way to become a millionaire. Those of who understand finance understand. You dollar cost average by depositing, by investing a small little percentage, hopefully 10%, or more of your paycheck every single week. Every week, bi-weekly, monthly, you dollar cost average your way in consistently. You don't invest a couple dollars and take a season off, then invest a couple more dollars and take a season off. Eh, no results for you. James, that's my best answer. If you have something more specific, I'm happy to help. Robert says, what kind of rice does Spider-Man like? Answer, Uncle Ben's. That's true. Now, I... I don't like Uncle Ben's because it's, it's well, that, that's not true. I don't know. There's a bunch of different options out there. I don't do the boiling bag crap. I'd stay away from all that stuff. Gosu says the Dolce diet, it's only the skinny fats that says those things, LOL. And the ones at the gym barely working a sweat, spending an hour doing dumbbell curls. That is very true. The skinny fats, those who are, they're not heavy, but at the same time, they have high body fat percentage and low relative body weight, right? So I, I agree with you. They have low quality. Gosu says most people do not get enough protein in their diet. You can tell by their body competition, composition. I agree. Back to what I said to the young man before. You want to do the four by four? About 40 grams of protein per day. 30 to 60 on average is ideal for the average healthy adult, active adult. 
somewhere right around 40 or so grams is a great place to start for most people, depending on relative body size, but the average American, the average American male is somewhere like 190 some odd pounds with a relatively high BMI. Unfortunately, I think it's, it's over 50% of, of American men are considered obese. Now two thirds are overweight to obese. So it's not a good thing. Uh, Mama Coochie says, I guess some roasted butternut squash pureed into some bone broth on a cold day can be our secret. Shh, don't, don't tell the carnivores that, that you're having butternut squash because somehow it's so funny. They pretend somehow that's going to now blow everything up, but they'll say, go ahead and, and, and drink your beer or vodka or wine snort lines of Coke consume synthetic toxic chemicals in their pre and post workout. Like that's all okay. But God forbid you eat a blueberry. I mean, that's, that's, that's unheard of. You, you can tell when they talk, you can tell they are fools. They don't know what they're talking about or they are intentionally lying to you to steal your money. And they don't have to do that. They can simply tell the truth. If they, they, you can run a profitable business by telling people the truth and providing value to their life. That's it. How easy is that? That, that? That's business 101. I only do charms, chest and arms. You probably look great in a tank top, but not so good with your clothes off. Yao says, hey, coach, do vegetables really contain defense chemicals? If so, are fruits a preferable choice? Some vegetables do, but usually the preparation process negates that or corrects that. Right. Some do everything had. There's always a yin and a yang. There always is a pro. And here's what we do. We say, eat raw spinach. Put spinach into a smoothie. Bake your spinach into a quiche or a casserole. Saute your spinach lightly. And serve it with a little garlic. Why is that? Because each time you prepare it in a different manner, you unlock different nutrient profiles of that individual ingredient. We eat raw vegetables. We cook our vegetables. We bake our vegetables. We, we puree our vegetables. We, we, we eat a wide variety. Why is that? So we have, it's like investing in, um, the, the VTI, the total stock market index, a good analogy for those who understand finances, which is what we try and blend on this channel. You're getting the best of everything, not too much of anything. In our opinion, this is ideal. This is ideal. Chris Lopez, I have a fight coming up in 14 days. Which carbs are good for carb loading for maximum glycogen? White rice, I would say. White rice is great, but be targeted, be specific. Don't overeat it. Don't eat too much. Eat just enough. Eat just a little bit. I'd probably start with a quarter of a cup at each meal and see how you feel. Simple. But I, I don't know you well enough. I would actually want to do an intake. I would want to learn more. You know, there's lots of things. If anyone's interested, you can actually, there might be a few spots left. I'm not sure if the wait list is still up. TheDolceDiet.com. You can click the link below. I actually provide online personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's called the VIP Elite Program. Anyone who wants to work with me for a one-month retainer, it's 30 days straight, whatever you want, whatever you need, however I can help you, bang, the VIP Elite. This is at TheDolceDiet.com. You click the link above um, on the header happy to do that. And if, if spots are sold out, don't worry, you'll be waitlisted until somebody's 30 day term expires. And then you'll get an email or a note saying, Hey, it's uh, open again. What do you do if you miss a main meal? Well, why would you miss a meal? Question number one, why did you miss the meal? What did you do? How did you fuck up? What did you not plan for? How were you not prepared? And why not? Well, let's fix that flaw in your mentality. And then I would just roll right into the next meal. Simple. Steven says, your information has really helped me so much. You are the man. Thank you. Results don't lie. Results don't lie. Bam. Neither does the bicep of truth. The bicep of truth right there, ladies and gentlemen. The bicep of truth does not lie. When you see the bicep of truth right there, you know I'm not lying, baby. Why would I lie? It's easier to tell the truth, right? Why, why would I lie? Why? It, it's so funny to see these fools in the marketing industry, fitness marketers out there who lie all day long to constantly sell you shit instead of telling you the truth and then providing products and services that are aligned with the truth. Like, like I, I don't understand this, but that's it's very profitable. You can see. And it's so funny to see the people who sell you keto 
And then they sell you carnivore. And then they sell you intermittent fasting. And then they sell you some sort of carb product. They're always trying something different, selling you something different. I call them hashtag jumpers. They're simply just trying to stay in the algorithm, the hashtag, saying whatever the fuck they have to say to clickbait you to buy something. Shadow banning information is so dangerous. Ain't that the truth? Angel, F you, Uncle Mike, smash that like button. Don't say diet over everything. Thank you. Changing lives on the daily. Thankful to be a part of this team. Angel, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. And guys and gals, if you appreciate this content, thank you for being here. Feel free to consider subscribing to this channel. I will work my ass off to earn that. Earn your subscription. Earn your time. Earn your respect by providing you honest, actionable, and evidence-based information to add value to your life. That is my job. Give the video a thumbs up if any of this information is helpful, but definitely leave comments below because we create videos every single day based upon your questions. User question, ask this, ask this, ask this, that, that. I love that. I love answering your questions for free, by the way, for free. Um, Andre says, coach, how can or should you do a recomp? I have 10 to 15 pounds of excessive weight. Should I cut or do a recomp? Our Living Lean program, if you're interested, click the link below. We have our 12-week Living Lean program. That is a body recomposition program. You get the eight weeks of Living Lean. You get four weeks of three weeks to shred it. You can choose shredded first as a jump off, or you can finish with shredded to really peak out at the end. The Living Lean program is a recomposition program. We are focused on maintaining the muscle tissue you have, building new healthy functional muscle tissue while losing total body fat percentage. It is a recomposition program. Three weeks of shredded, on the other hand, is much more of a dramatic weight loss program. We're trying to maintain your muscle tissue while getting you totally scraped out and shredded. The expected weight loss from what we've seen on three weeks to shredded is to lose one pound per day for 21 days. That's how three weeks to shredded was designed. Individual results may vary. Many people will lose the 21 pounds. Many people lose considerably more. Some people, quote, only lose 15 pounds in 21 days, but that's typically because they are smaller frame people with less weight to lose. Andre, I would definitely say click the link below. Start the Living Lean program. Everything is planned for you. Every meal, every ingredient, every recipe, every workout, every set, every rep is all there. Plus, you get the support of our online community. Whatever I can do to help you. <laughs> Excuse me. Anthony says, what do you usually do when you are sick? I fall off the wagon immensely and I eat like crazy. Currently looking like a doughboy. Number one is I try not to get sick. I am a bit of a germaphobe. I take three showers per day. I wash my hands constantly, probably a little too much, admittedly so. Um, I'm super like hyper aware of, of germs and germy, gross, disgusting people. I try and avoid them at all costs. I take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D every single day, 5,000 IUs in the morning, 5,000 IUs at night. I take zinc. I take quercetin. I take B complex. I take vitamin C. I take ubiquinol. Uh, what else do I take? I take melatonin, six to 10 um, milligrams of melatonin. I'm taking some creatine right now. I might as well add that because I'm, I'm taking it. I, I do take, I don't take probiotics. I've played with probiotics. I don't feel as good. I eat a uh, a jar of kimchi or and sauerkraut per week, a little bit of Greek yogurt. I believe digestive health and science supports this. Your digestive health, the health of your microbiome has a dramatic impact on your immunity, your body's ability to fight off illness. Um, I stay super hydrated. I don't drink alcohol. I don't do drugs. I don't get stressed out. I go to bed nine hours before I'm supposed to wake up. I don't hang out with shitty, toxic, dysfunctional people. I face plant them, push them out of my fucking life. Real story. I work out every single day intelligently and intensely. That's what I do to not be sick. And then when I do, quote, get sick, it's barely ever. And... My body bounces back almost immediately. I never break my diet. Why would I pollute my body when my body needs healthy nutrients? It's like saying like, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to build a house here and I'm going to send all the skilled workers off the site and I'm going to get a bunch of, of unskilled, lazy folks on the job site. No, I want the healthiest possible nutrients coming and flowing into my body when my immunity is, is battling something. This is hard for a lot of people because a lot of people are not honest with themselves. 
Most people are not accountable. Most people are not intentional. Most people are not mindful. Most people are entitled little babies that pretend they work harder than they really do. They pretend they deserve things that they actually don't. I know I deserve nothing. I know I'm, I, I have no entitlements. I, I know that, that every single thing in my life must come from diligence and consistency and hard work. And I must be accountable to those specific goals, specifically when it comes to my health. That's the way I treat my health. I'm likely healthier. I, I know I'm healthier than most people by far. By far, I have the blood work to prove it. I train, I speak with humans every single day. I mean, I'm one of the healthiest people out there, the healthiest people that you meet. I'm a healthy dude, right? You can tell. Why is, and I meet more people, I travel more, I'm on planes and trains and automobiles and, and on different countries and different states all the freaking time, shaking hands and just being in these different germ zones, much more so than the average person. I'm much healthier, much more resilient than the average person. So I, ho I hope that helps. A little bit of a rant. Uh, James says, well, thank you, sir. Consistent. Consistency is everything. 47 in the chat. Go hit the thumbs up. Bam, hit that thumbs up, ladies and gentlemen. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate this content, if you appreciate the time, hopefully, that I put in. My job is to help you guys. That's what I'm here. That's what I'm trying to do. James says, I needed that. Bang, James, happy to hear. Amy, what's up, Amy? Amy says, come on, guys, drop Coach Mike a like for giving us great free content on a Saturday afternoon, by the way. It is true. It is Saturday. I'm here for you guys. Bam. Will says he's giving people free gold here. Amen. That's the job, baby. Trying to give you honest, actionable, evidence-based information. That's what I do. If you guys are just jumping onto the cat channel, when this video is over, go back, listen to the first you know, five or eight minutes or so to understand what the true best carbohydrate source is. I appreciate you guys for being here. If you like the information, feel free to engage with the channel for the algorithm. Rodney, Rodney, what's up, my man? Been a while, brother. Haven't seen you pop in here. Good to see you, Rodney. Hope all is well. Um, what's up, Coach Cole says, are you able to make a video either on channel or 20 minute fitness outlining proper form for kettlebell exercises along with the best kettlebell? Yeah, I do. I have quite a few, um, probably have about 20 different exercises in our kettlebell database already filmed. So go to the, check out the 20 minute fitness network. We might actually have a few on there now, but I'll add more. I'll add more to this channel over the next few weeks that that will be coming. Um, EC says, do you have any flaws Coach, yes, I do. I have many flaws. I'm an entirely flawed human being, 100%, which is why I'm so goddamn motivated to fill in those flaws, to, to outwork my flaws. Um, genetically, I, I, have, I have no gifts. Athletically, I have no gifts. The only way I was able to be successful was through diligence and consistency and hard work. So I was given a very stubborn mindset. I, I do not mind. I actually embrace pain. I, I look forward to it. I love sacrifice. I like to be cold. I like to be wet. I like to be scared. I like to be uncomfortable. That lets me know I'm earning something because I have no special gifts. I am not unique in any special way. In order for me to achieve anything, I must outwork every single motherfucker who lines up against me. And in my mind, everyone's lined up against me. I have a very big heart. I'm very open. I am, it is very easy for people to take advantage of me. And over the course of my life, I have been taken advantage of dramatically. Dramatically. Because I am very open and I think everyone sees the world as I do. I believe everyone loves as much as I do. Everybody, I believe, wants to do well and do good for the community and for their other, the, the, the common man. And I, that's my belief system. And I am woefully, woefully taken advantage of for that by my family, by my friends, by, by peers, by athletes, by teammates, by coworkers consistently. But I will always say I will never be the one to screw you over. And in any bad situation, I want to be the victim in that bad situation because I do not want it to be you. And I will never do that to you. That is my flaw. And my wife, she in many ways is my conscious because she can see all these, these dirtbags and scumbags and all these horrible people who are always trying to grab a piece of me and steal from me and, and take something that I've, I've granted or I've gained or I've built and they always want to be a part of it. 
And I said, I said, no way. There's, there was no way. No way he would do that. No way she would do that. There's no way. Look, they have this one tiny little sliver of a defining characteristic of a, that, that, that gives them the ability to, to be redeemed. And she's like, they're going to fuck you over, man, Mike. And what happens? They do. So that I think that is my biggest flaw. My heart is too big and I am too focused on helping people um, to my own detriment in many ways. But I will not stop because that's who I am. And I will not become. I will not become the person who thinks everyone is bad, no matter how much bad that I see in the world and how much bad I see in people, even people close to me. And some of, the, some of the biggest pains in my life were from people who were close to me that I believed in, that I let in, that I propped up, that I built up, that I sacrificed for, that I delayed gratification and I gave up rewards to help other people. And almost, almost, almost every single time I was the one who, who was, was taken advantage of in those situations for sure. So I would say that's probably my biggest flaw, but that's okay. Because that's I'm going to roll with that, and I am not, I am not bitter about it at all. I am, I am, I am, I'm, I'm blessed because for every person who screwed me over, there's probably a hundred thousand people I have been able to help in some sort of way. Um, B Harp says, "Do you spread the vitamins out over the day, or just smash in the morning?" I usually do two. I'll do morning, typically morning. Most of my vitamins, outside of the zinc, the zinc and quercetin, I'll actually take um, fasted on an empty stomach because zinc has a little bit of an absorption issue depending on what you're eating. Um, so I'll take that by itself, and then everything else I'll take either after breakfast or after like meal three or four later on in my day. I typically eat four to five meals a day. Andre says, "Thanks, Coach. You got it, Rodney. OG Dolce, Rodney." Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Working hard for you guys. Yao says, Coach, does a person that eats a high-fat diet due to raw milk, whole eggs, and red meat have to worry about his cholesterol? Yes. Assuming a healthy person that follows what you recommend for optimal health. Well, I do not recommend raw milk. I do not recommend an overabundance of whole eggs and an overabundance of red meat. Now... It's all specific to you, the individual. If you're working with us, you're working with one of our registered dietitians, you run through an entire intake form. I think it's about 75. We have two different intakes. One's about 75 questions, and one is almost 100 questions where we go through background and lifestyle. We analyze blood work. We look at any recent doctor reports. So we really we do a full deep dive, deep intake into your lifestyle, and that helps us better determine how to best make nutrition recommendations to you, to your lifestyle. But we don't recommend raw milk. A couple, like I'll eat two whole eggs and four whites. That's my ratio. Red meat, I'll typically eat four ounces of red meat four days a week. Maybe, maybe six ounces, like once and four ounces, two or three times a week. I eat chicken. I eat, I eat uh, fish. I probably eat more fish than anything else because I'm a fisherman. I live on the beach. I, I, I surf fish. You can actually show up at 5 a.m. a lot of days and you'll actually see me out there in my fucking waders standing in the Atlantic Ocean, pulling fish out of the ocean. Or in the summertime, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hop on a, one of my buddy's boats or I'll jump on a charter or I'll be out in the river, right? So I got a ton of fish. Um, so I, I hope that helps. I don't know if I answer that. If, if not, just let me know. Um, EC says, wow, thanks for your honesty, Mike. Well, I, I appreciate it, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm here for you guys. I'm 100% honest and transparent, whatever I can do to, to help you guys. Cause I know for a fact, the more honest I am, the more you guys will believe me because you can tell if I'm full of shit, right? You can tell when someone is full of shit, your spidey sense goes off. You can tell, you can feel, you know, they are full of shit. Even if they're saying something you want to hear, especially when they're saying something you want to hear. I get most criticized because I say things that people don't want to hear, but it's true. Like taking personal accountability for yourself, like delaying gratification, like avoiding synthetic toxic chemicals so popular and so prevalent in the, the, the fitness culture by 
not blaming your wife or your husband or your mom or your boss or your, your neighbor or your car on your problems because your problems are yours and yours alone and only for you to solve. Right? By saying keto is stupid and carnivore is dumb and vegan is not as effective as the vegans pretended out to be. And we as humans are omnivores. And for anyone to say anything different is false. Well, all, none of that is popular. Nothing I just said is popular, nor is anything I said really marketable. All right? It's very hard for me to market self Discipline, personal accountability, consistency of effort. I'm, I'm, I work in the fitness industry. It's very hard for me to build and grow and monetize a fitness brand when I cannot resort to the same clickbait, keyword, jumping propaganda that most of my competitors and most of the peers do out there that have much larger followings than I do because of that. Because they pander to the lowest common denominator. They tell people what they want to hear, which is oftentimes what is not successful and not beneficial. And I made the choice in the very beginning to not do that, to be honest and to be transparent. Right? And it is working out pretty well for me. I will say that. But it, it's 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 a it's a different audience, and hopefully you guys hear, you hear, you understand it, you agree with it, and in time, you realize like, man, that shit Dolce has been saying for the last fucking twenty years is is right. You, I'm not changing my tune, right? Anyone who's followed me, anyone, because I'm I'm published since the '90s. I'm published in magazines as a fitness expert, right? You can go back and read everything I've ever wrote and all the blogs I've ever put out, all the articles I've ever done. You know, I've been on Rogan twice. I've been on, on, on Shop Show and London Real and done TV shows with, with, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and, and, and Chris Powell and Extreme Makeover, right? This goes back decades. Every single thing I've said and done over 20 plus years is pretty much exactly what I'm saying right now, just slightly evolved. There's no, you know, like... Um, Guy like Rob Wolf. I'm not bashing Rob Wolf. I, I like Rob Wolf. Rob Wolf used to be a zone guy. He was known for the zone diet. Well, then he was the paleo guy. Well, then he was a keto guy. Then he was a fasting guy. I don't get that. I think Rob's a smart guy, and I'm not bashing him. Tom DeLauer, fitness YouTube fame. Tom DeLauer was a bodybuilder, six meals a day, yoked, ripped, jacked, muscular. Now he's the, quote, self-proclaimed foremost, foremost expert on keto. He looks exactly the same today as he did when he was a six meal a day bodybuilder guy. Probably looks slightly worse today than when he was a bodybuilder guy. And he's made other jumps during the time. Dr. Eric Berg, another famous YouTube dude. These are all very clickbaity titles. You got a guy like Jordan Syatt running around out there, Gary V's ex-personal trainer, telling people it's okay to skip workouts and eat cookies and be a little fluffy while calling himself a fitness expert, but the dude's not fit. No disrespect to Jordan. He might be a good guy. He's not fit. He's not ripped. He's not strong. He's not muscular. He's an average dude who's not fat. Clickbaiting people, again, telling people what they want to hear but what's not accurate for them to become better versions of themselves. And may, that's their way. Hey, that's fine. I don't begrudge them, but I do not agree with them. And I will not take that route. I will tell you the truth 100% of the time. You can agree with it. Awesome. You can disagree with it. Awesome. But I ask you to show me why. I'm one of the few people that will say, prove me wrong. Everything I said, prove me wrong. Please do the research. Come back. Please prove me wrong. Show me why I'm wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. You can't find it because I'm not going to say it if it's not true. If it's, if it's, if it's not accurate, if it's not evidence-based, if it's not well-supported, I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to say it because that is my brand. That's why the world's greatest athletes hire me and Hollywood celebrities hire me. And literal, literal heads of state, extreme executives hire me. You think they haven't done their due diligence on me? You think their teams, their assistants haven't done their due diligence on me? I know for a fact 
I have been vetted at a CIA level by some of my clients. I know for a fact. You think they're going to hire me if I'm full of shit? If I'm some flash in the pan clickbait douchebag? Oh, hell no. Because they can hire anybody in the world that they want. That, that is real talk. That is 100% fucking honest and real. Um, Jal says, can you tell me your thoughts on vitamin D sun exposure? I love it. I'm the dude who's outside in the middle of the day, even in the winter time. At the peak of sunlight, I'm outside with my sun off, with my shirt off. I'm, I'm, I'm pasty ass white right now because the sun is like, like, you know, in the summertime, it's straight up in the air. Now it's like just barely kind of like passing around the horizon. But still, I do my best. But I do vitamin. I personally, because of my blood work, I supplement with 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day every single day. 5,000 IUs after a meal in the morning. 5,000 IUs after a meal at night. And that keeps me at optimal vitamin D levels. Even when I lived in Las Vegas, my body has a harder time converting vitamin D. Even when I lived in Las Vegas and I like never wore a shirt and I was outside all the time, I still had lower vitamin D than you would assume. And my diet's perfect. My body just has a bit of a challenge because I'm a human. We're all human, which is why I will sp I constantly speak on the importance of getting blood work. If I did not get my blood work, I'd be like, man, look how tan I am. I'm outside all the time. I live in Vegas. Oh, I'm, I'm totally fine. I got my blood work done. I pay to get my vitamin D checked still. And I found when I take, when I personally, I'm not telling you, when I personally take 10,000 IUs twice a day, my vitamin D level is perfect. Probably another reason why I never get sick. <laughs> OG Dolce repping the Toronto Raptors. I was actually given this when I went out there and worked with the Toronto Raptors uh, maybe eight or so years ago. It was awesome. I, I was brought in to, to work with the team and work with their coaches and work with their admin. It was awesome. They, they kitted me out and some, I got this shirt. This shirt feels, it's it's like, it feels so nice. That it's super high, high end. I got, I got a lot of great gear. A lot of it didn't fit. Everything was made for like, I'm five foot 10. But I was like, I think I was like 220 when I was out there. So like in order for it to fit me, it was, it was just funny with the way some of the gear fit. Like this shirt is actually long. I, I have it tucked in right now because it goes down a little bit too, too, too long. I, I, I look like, uh, you know, like, um, I don't know, like 90s era Eminem walking around in this shirt if it's not tucked in. Excuse me, I'm getting a little dry mouth right now. Um, Adam says, I'd like to see more content about shredding and how you handle clients that have to weigh in very light and lean, just in general guidelines of how you dial back calories or raise activity and output. Adam, I love that. I'm actually going to screenshot this question, which will remind me to put a video out like that. So Adam, I will do a video based on your exact question and everyone watching right now, leave comments below this video and I will do, I will film responses whole videos on your individual question for free completely. I love that. That's a great question, Adam. I'll do that. You might consider our three weeks to shredded program. You can click the link below. If you want to actually follow exactly what we do with our world-class athletes, that's available at thedolcediet.com. We have a 20% discount promo code transform for anyone who is interested in that. That is there for you. Will says a legitimate 20 years. It's over 20 years. I actually opened my business officially in 1997, being paid in 97. But in 1993, I was working in earnest as a paid coach, a paid trainer in 1993. I was born in 76. I'm 45 years old. So you guys do the math. In 1997, I was working. I was actually in 97. I was working for Jay Robinson. Um, at, at the University of Minnesota um, as one of their strength and conditioning contributors to Jay Robinson uh, newsletter and his camp. So all the way back in 97, I already had national acclaim working with Division I wrestlers. That's back in 97, so that's 24 years ago. I started working with athletes on Team Henzo Gracie right about that same, same time also um, in, in the mid-late 90s. Um, guys like Dante Rivera and, and Kurt Pellegrino, when they won their ring of combat titles in the early 2000s, I had been working with them for a few years prior to that. And quite a few of Joe a Alert and, and Norm Shack, just some of the names uh, I can remember right now. And I'm, I mean, all that's legit. All that is easy to, easy to, to do research. On. I've been in this, I was hired in 2004, which is crazy. We're almost 20 years now in 2004 by Randy Couture, Robert Follis, Matt Linnell, and Dan Henderson to be the head strength coach of team quest, Portland, Oregon. 
Think about that. That's when the UFC only had four events on pay-per-view per year before the Ultimate Fighter 1 even came out. Um, Rodney says, which MMA athlete have you had the most fun working with? Oh, wow, that's a lot. I had great fun. I had Chael Sonnen. Chael P. Sonnen, come on. When you are working with Chael P. Sonnen, it is a good time for all. Chael's attitude, his behavior, and I've worked with a lot of great athletes, by the way, that I absolutely loved working with them. They were awesome. But how do you beat Chael P. Sonnen? Right? You get to hang out with the GOAT every day and just see the way his brain thinks. And he's so funny and affable and caring and diligent and honest and loyal and hardworking and skilled as an athlete. It was an amazing experience as a coach, but also as a person. It was fun. It was fun. Travis says, Dolce, die for life. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, Pedro says, Coach, why do MMA athletes seem to have less cardiovascular endurance than footballers? Is it due to the stress of being in a fight or due to the dehydration and, or training methods? I would say both. I would say they are listening to quite I, – I know a lot of these athletes, and I know their training protocols. I know the, the, the doofus coaches that they're listening to. And also, they are not as professional. Here's the thing. Let me wrap it up in this one. Most of these – most MMA fighters, most UFC fighters, Bellator, 1FC, most fighters are not professional athletes. They might get paid a few times a year, but they do not live the lifestyle of a LeBron James, a Tom Brady, or a Christian uh, Ronaldo. They do not live that life 52 weeks out of the year. They go into an eight-week training camp, and then it's followed by eight to 12 weeks of fucking debauchery. That's the real of it. That's the real of it. I'll do a whole video on that. Respect the Raptors. Amen. Amen. Had a blast out there. Uh, Jao says, Coach, does the fact that I live in Brazil, close to the equator, mean that I should be more outside in the sun? Or does it come down to individual biology and skin color melanin? All of the above. Now, I wish I lived closer to the equator. I am a, a, a sun worshiper. I love it. Like, it's, it's snowing outside in New Jersey right now. Snow is everywhere. I enjoy the snow because I like hard work, and I like the whole Norman Rockwell romantic imagery, but I love to be sweaty outside in the sunshine. I love a reason not to have clothes on. I love to see other beautiful humans without clothes on in a very respectful way. I love all that summer brings. I love long days. I love swimming and hiking and outdoor activities. I love camping and sleeping under the stars. I love all of that. So I would love to be closer to the equator. Um, so hope I, I, I don't know if I answered that correctly or, or not for you, Zhao, but I, I think I did. Uh, Milan says the legendary beanie is back. Yes, this is a different beanie. I have, I have quite a few of these beanies. <laughs> Yesterday is funny. Mine was wet from shoveling snow all day. Uh, do you switch up your training depending on the season? I do. I change my goals consistently. Right now, my goal is to be at 8% body fat by May 1st. I started the year at 212 pounds at 12% body fat. My goal is to be 200 pounds or more at 8% body fat on May 1st. At 45 years old, that is very challenging. That is very difficult. This means I will not lose any muscle. I'm going to maintain, I have approximately 186 pounds of, of lean functional muscle on my frame, right? So we say functional mass and non-functional mass because people are like, well, your organs and bone. Yeah, I get it. So my lean mass is approximately 186 pounds, adding in my body fat percentage that puts me up to about 212 at, or right around 212 or so. My goal is to be that 186 pounds of lean functional mass at 8% body fat by May 1st. That is a very, very challenging goal for someone my age with my experience in training. It's harder to make these type of changes, to get down the single digit, to go from 12%, which is, I got fucking abs and, and striations in my shoulders and all that stuff. That's great. I look, I'm happy with the way I look right now. I don't have to do anything. I set these goals for myself to keep myself accountable, to force myself to not get complacent. It's very challenging. It, it forces me to focus on my eating, forces me to focus on my, my workouts, forces me to get out of bed in the morning and forces me to go to bed at the proper time at night. It forces me. I do this on purpose. So yes, my seasons change based upon these crazy goals I set for myself. Soccer players, entire sport is cardio, chasing a ball and flopping and such. Funny. 
Um, George says, Mike, speaking of a quarter pounder, can you talk about or make a video about Chael Sonnen wanting a Big Mac and fries and a Coke and how he earned it? Yes, I will do a whole video on that, uh, on, on Chael. That's a great one. Uh, Milan says, is it true that people who live in colder regions tend to lose weight easier and faster than people who live in tropical warmer areas? I, I don't know if that's true. I don't have any data to support that plus or minus, but I've lived in Las Vegas and I've lived in the Pacific Northwest. I saw no difference personally. I didn't seem any harder or easier. It was just a matter of lifestyle. I, I, I don't see of any difference. Now, maybe there's some sort of, of, of data out there, some sort of statistical relevance. I am unaware if there is. There might be. And if you guys come across some, please let me know. But I work with people all over the world in different climates from different cultures. Are they following the plan or are they not? Are they overeating the wrong foods? Are they under training? Are they not consistent? That's what matters more than anything else. Jal says, what is the age limit a man should still be able to have a child or have sex? Well, I believe men can continually procreate very, very late into the 60s and 70s past the point that typically, statistically, women can. But I just read an article recently of a young lady, well, of a, of a, a, lady, well, a young lady in her 50s who had a child. Now, most of the time, the doctors will say, hey, like anything past 35, ladies, you got to be careful. It's harder. So things get harder for sure. But guys, we can typically produce uh, viable um, sperm much later in life when compared to women of similar age as far as you know, the ability to procreate. And that is not my specialty, by the way. I'm not an expert, though I am well-practiced. Sorry, uh, George. Hopefully you guys left. Sorry about that. George, thank you. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. Um, thoughts on Wim Hof. You know, I don't know enough about Wim Hof. I, I get it. I understand it. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I go in the cold plunge, um, you know, probably five, six days a week, four, four to five days a week right now when I'm really zooming, zooming I'm, I'm doing it like, uh, you know, five, six days a week. I go to the banya, I go to the sauna, I go to the cold plunge. I do all that stuff. I don't know enough about Wim stuff to really comment. Um, from an expert opinion. So I, I, I think I, I, you know, I like his general vibe. I don't know enough about him. Never hung out with him, never spoke to him. I didn't really, I've never really done a deep dive into what he does because I understand cold water immersion, I believe at a very high level also, but maybe not as, you know, from his perspective. Um, Jasmine White Rice. Yes, that is our go-to. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to shut it down here. We are at an hour. I appreciate you guys all for being here. If you're interested, check the links below this video. If you want to start your own personalized four-week or 12-week diet and exercise program, the Dolce Diet System, our Living Lean Plan, our Three Weeks to Shredded Plan, you can save 20% right now with promo code TRANSFORM. Click the link below. You can also hire me to work one-on-one -on -one in our VIP Elite program. It is a 30-day engagement where you and I work together, troubleshooting, helping you, making sure you are successful in anything in your life, fitness and fat loss, finances, personal uh, motivation, building your business. That's all the online coaching tab at thedolcediet.com. You can click the link below that. We have a whey protein, cold process, cross flow, micro filtered whey protein isolate. That is a limited time sale at metcon.com. If you want the highest quality whey protein isolate, just click the links below. Also, big thanks to certified Piedmontese, which is right there. Certified Piedmontese. You can save 25% on grass fed, grass finished beef delivered to your door in two days or less at no additional cost using promo code Dolce. Save 25%, get that free shipping. Certified Piedmontese. This is the only beef in my freezer. The only beef I trust to feed my family is certified Piedmontese. And I do not offer endorsements lightly. I love Piedmontese. I love the team. I, I love the humans behind it. And I absolutely love the product that they put out. So check that out. Once again, guys and gals, thank you all so much. You are amazing. Thank you for being here. And until next time, boom.